and we saw so many things, but I wanted to do something special. <laughs> I, I thought that it's like a gang uh, a buster, they wanted to car hijack us. There's like the main spot for a beautiful sunset. Welcome everyone. Today, a second time on the show, Alexandra all over. Hello. Uh, we're here because we're talking about our anniversary. What kind of anniversary? Our um, first year stay in Latin America. That's right. Uh, we uh, were traveling already for one year in uh, Latin America. Exactly a year prior to this event, we left Europe to fly to Mexico. Then we went to Paraguay to get our residency, bought our car, drove all through Brazil just to end up here at... Santo Amaro. I have no idea what that is. What place? The Dunes. The Dunes. Yeah, in Lençóis Maranhenses National Park. What it means is white bed sheets. Yeah, that's what it looks like. When you thought before we had our one year anniversary of traveling, what was it that you envisioned would happen after a year of traveling? Well, I always wanted to do something special when I knew the first year anniversary was gonna come up. And uh, I mean, we did always see a lot because we were traveling and driving a lot every day and we saw so many things, but I wanted to do something special. And so many people told us that the National Park of Lensois Maranienses was super special. Um, more in the, in the rainy season than in the dry season, I think. Mm -hmm. We were there in the dry season and it was still spectacular. So yeah, for me, it was like a dream come true. It was exactly what I wanted to do. We drove actually multiple days to go all the way up there. We stayed in uh, one of the hottest cities of Brazil. Teresina. Teresina for about a week preparing, you know, doing stuff. And then <laughs> we arrived. We arrived in the north. And what did we find in the north? Okay, so uh, there were two towns that you can stay in when you want to visit the national park. It's uh, Pajirinhas and Santo Amaro. So I am personally actually not a big fan of uh, sightseeing. So it's not like I try to seek out places just to go there to see something special. But we ended up going up north because we wanted to see those dunes. Yes. And uh, the, the northern coast of Brazil uh, towards the Atlantic is just a pretty crazy place because of all the wind and apparently the sand that's coming in, maybe from the Sahara. Yeah, hello. So we're not really sure what this is all about, but people seem to love this place. It's super windy. Uh, and all you hear kind of like full of sand. This place has a lot of dunes, and uh, the dunes, uh, I guess, they come because of the wind. And you see, it destroys a lot of stuff here too. And if you see like the wind section, you can probably see it like going before along the sand. Everything is full of sand here. Uh, you have quite a lot of strange formations and you can see that of us driving along the coast. And then we saw this uh, tree? Yeah, there's a really famous tree, Arvori Penciada. And uh, it has like a, a funny shape. And uh, we just took some pictures there. And now actually what we found out was that it looks different. Right, uh, we just uh, looked at it in Google Maps again and apparently they built a fence around it and some structure so they Lame. don't want people to get any closer. <laughs> so we were the last ones who saw it in its natural <laughs> shape. Yeah. Also pretty good. But uh, after staying there in this area for a little bit, we came closer to the big dunes and uh, like probably most tourists, we ended up going to that first big town there that everybody was talking about. Right, so there's two towns that you can stay in when you want to visit the national park. The first one, the bigger one, is Bajirinhas. 
And uh, that's the one we, we tried Tom first. Coder. Yeah, he yeah. did not like it. I, I did not like it. I, basically, we were stalked by people who are guides who wanted to sell us something. Like, literally, they followed us. <laughs> With the moped knocking on our window while we were driving. <laughs> I, I, I thought that it's like a gang uh, a buster. They wanted to car hijack us. They were like knocking at our window <laughs> and trying to take the car or something. And they were following us with their mopeds all the time. This is basically what you see in car hijack videos. And uh, it was just um, really frustrating because, you know, you can tell them, no, we're not interested, which we are not. Uh, but they wouldn't leave. And so we went there to this town. We wanted to stay overnight. Uh, all the hotels there are way overpriced. And that was a off-season event during yeah. a time when basically nobody was traveling and still everything was really expensive. Well, uh, we, we had some food and then we left and we thought there must be another place and we didn't know, but uh, so we started to drive all around the dunes to the other side. So we, we didn't find the right city. We ended up in Humberto do Campos. And uh, it was interesting being there, but it was the opposite of the previous place because there were no tourists. No there was restaurants. Barely any local people there. Even though there were structures, but there was uh, almost no, no restaurants that were open and we barely found one hotel in the whole place. We stayed overnight there. Uh, we did make it to the other town. Eventually. Yes, so eventually somebody told us we have to backtrack, go all the way south and back up north and we ended up very close to the dunes on the western side of the dunes. And that was the town where we finally stayed a couple of days. Yes, it was called Santo Amaro. And it's the other town, the alternative town that you can stay in if you don't want to have the big tourists, touristy town. In Santo Amaro, they had lots of posadas. They also had travel agencies where you could like rent a buggy and a guide and, and go to the dunes, but they wouldn't stalk you on the street. It was a lot more tranquilo. Mm -hmm. Very calm there. So we just actually spent a few days uh, just getting familiar with the area and uh, walk around. It was by itself already pretty beautiful because it was so close to the dunes. So you see lots of sand dunes, we see uh, water uh, that comes back and forth depending on the tides and it's, it's just an amazing sunsets there. And there's always um, all along the places where we were there's uh, interesting animals that are just free roaming. Looks cute. In this case, we found some horses and we see some donkeys and cows all the time, so it was really nice. Uh, I think there was also an interesting TV tower where like huge swarms of birds yeah. were always circling around. It was kind of funny to see. Yeah, I wonder what those birds feel like yeah, when they right? are getting the cell phone radiation while they're circling all around. Maybe it's like TV, you know, you're just like hypnotized and you kind of like it, you enjoy it, you want to be there. But yeah. maybe it's not so good for them. I'm sure this is not 5G yet, um, so I guess we still have to deal with LT in these places. But uh, what do you guys think those birds are going to do when the 5G towers are going to come? So we wanted to get a buggy for the dunes, right? Well, what we wanted to do was we wanted to drive our Prado yeah. on the dunes ourselves. And, uh, you know, we're, we're kind of familiar with uh, sand driving, so that shouldn't have been a problem, but we found out that it is not allowed to have your own car drive along the dunes. Yeah, you need a guide and you need an authorized car. Which is also very ironic because all the guides had Toyota Land Cruisers <laughs> and Toyota Hiluxes, which basically is exactly our car. And most of those cars <laughs> look a lot older than our car and ours is almost 25 years old. So yeah. there you go. So what was really important to us was, um, because it was our anniversary, that we have our own buggy, our own guide, mm -hmm. uh, who would like go to places that we want to see because all the other buggies had up to like, I don't know, 10 people or so that went on the tour. And those tours looked very different from the tour that we went on. Uh, because you can also go in the morning, but we wanted to see the sunset over the dunes. Mm -hmm. And that was really cool. So first of all, what we did was um, all those little lagoas, the lagoons that you see in the, in the dunes, they're full with people because all those buggies with the tourists, they want to go swim there, right? Mm -hmm. But we did not want to swim, which yeah. is, we stopped, we looked at it 10 minutes and then we drove off because what we really wanted to do is fly our drone.
So there were different spots and our driver, his name was Clay Milton, uh, he told us that at the, uh, the one dune cliff, or I don't know how, how, how you say that, mm -hmm. um, there's like the main spot for a beautiful sunset. So we drove there and you could see like after a few minutes more and more people would come there and everybody would get, would get ready and uh, just wait for the sun to like go down. After this beautiful day, we went home thanks to Clemilton. Uh, we had a, an amazing time. And I also have a video on the dunes. That's right. If you guys want to check out Alexandra's version of the same day, go to her channel and check out this video right there. And uh, it's fantastic. And then you tell us, I don't know, which one you like better. It's not a challenge. We don't compete. So the next big uh, city of Sao Luis, it's a million people city, so we uh, ended up there. And, uh, again, like we always do, having an Airbnb, sometimes with more or less challenging things going on. So it had to happen at some point in my life. Flying a drone can be fun and at some point, uh, well, you just hit a building. I uh, ended up uh, wanting to fly the drone to get a cool capture of that uh, flag tower because I needed a nice cool Brazilian flag. Well, there is a construction site right next to that flag post and I flew around a couple of times and well, this is what happens, and uh, but we got the drone back, so that's the good thing. So we decided we did the other next best coolest thing, we would cross the Amazon rainforest. The Trans-Amazonian Highway. That's right. Multiple days, 10 days? 11. 11 days through the Amazon rainforest. And you can check this out in the next episode. Go ahead and subscribe to this channel here and then see the video of uh, the next episode coming over here. All right, see you next time. Bye.